Hello there, this is going to be a general love reading for the sign of Capricorn. Hello Capricorns, this is for November. This is for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, as well as the cross watcher of the Capricorns. <clears throat> I would first like to start off with the Crimson Secrets for you guys. First card's full bloom. November, you're gonna really be blooming. People are gonna see you and say, holy shit. There's a feeling of, remember the quote? I always just don't know who said it. I don't know, maybe it's an anonymous quote, I don't know. But the quote is, the flower doesn't dream of the bee. It blossoms and the bee comes. See that? This is, um, the flower doesn't chase is the point here. Flower doesn't do that. The flower just does its thing and becomes glorious and beautiful and blooms and the bee comes. Now you also have spontaneous and you have infatuation. Someone here falls really quickly for another person. They very quickly become infatuated. Uh, that's the bee being infatuated with the flower in case you had any doubts here. So there will be a bee or bees that will become very quickly infatuated. How can you not be infatuated? I mean, look at how fucking gorgeous and stunning. She is living her best life. She's blooming into her full potential. She's glowing. She loves herself. She knows what she deserves. She's not out on these dating apps trying to go on a date every single night because she's lonely and she's desperate and she just needs somebody in her life. No, look at her. She's independent and she's just gorgeous and beautiful. And this is important because I feel like that's what they fall in love with. They fall in love with the fact that you're not like most women. Because that is most women. Most women are looking for love in all of the wrong places. And instead of sitting in their place of power and peace and love and magic and allowing it to come by, by manifesting it and by becoming the energy of which they're trying to attract, they do the wrong thing, which we've all done in our past. We've all done that in our past. But honey, that was the motherfucking past, okay? We don't do that shit no more because we learned that, no, I don't chase nobody's ass. I'm not going to convince nobody to love me. I'm not going to con I'm not going to manipulate them into thinking I'm the best one to choose. You don't want to choose me, don't fucking choose me. It's your loss. Okay? That's just period the bottom line here. So she is fully bloomed. Something about someone seeing you this way. Secrets, private. So there is a locked gate here. The gate is closed, no entry, but the gate is transparent. So there, this is symbolic of this connection. It's like the gate was closed, but you can see right through it. So someone here is really guarded, but they still show their whole hand. Like, for example, if they're infatuated with you, it's like so obvious. It's like so obvious, but they're not saying it. They're not doing anything. They're not asking you out. They're not being like, I'm going to you. They don't do those things, but it's like super fucking obvious. Soul connection, mouth watering, and you have twin flame bottom of the deck. So there is extreme physical attraction. Look, you have temptation here too. Extreme physical attraction. They wish you'd put it in your mouth like this lollipop right here, okay? There is extreme lust and sexual tension and desire and want and need. So this is a very sexually charged connection, absolutely. With the twin flame energy here, tells us this is like two peas in a pod. But if you do feel that this connection is a twin flame connection, then what's important would be you doing your work individually, they doing their, their work individually, and you guys come together when you both have done doing your work and you are at a higher vibration, right? This feel, and that could be why the feelings here are so intense, because it's an intense connection. But it requires a lot of fucking work. You guys probably trigger the shit out of each other. Oh, I have no doubt you trigger the shit out of each other. I mean, that's what it is, isn't it? It's like a washing machine. You're, you're washing each other clean of these impurities or these toxic issues or these things that haven't healed yet. 
And so there is agitation between the two of you. I have no doubt. Bottom of the deck's love confession. You're going to get some sort of love confession but from a bee. You are. Look, top two, bottom of the deck, imprinted. They feel connected to you in a, in a way like they just can't shake it because it's like getting a tattoo. The skin's never the same again. Yeah, you can try and go get it removed, honey, but the skin is forever altered. Just like them, their soul, their heart, their mind has been forever altered by this connection. Mm, six of Wands, victory. Someone here is very fucking successful. They're also going to overcome something. Six of Pentacles, Five of Cups. They overcome feeling sorry for themselves. They overcome, um, you know, even though it's the Five of Cups, which is a card of regret and shit like that, to me it feels like overcoming self-sabotage. The way they self-sabotaged you is they weren't reciprocating. If you, like, were really communicated with them in a conversation, they'd hold back. And then if you held back, they would be overly, you see what I'm saying? It was never on the same page at the same time. It's just, you, you just weren't, you weren't on the same page at the same time. You have strength here, Leo energy. This is beauty and the beast energy. They don't like that feeling. I, I just did a collective reading all about that, of why they're holding back, what's been making them hold back. And it was that, that they're Superman, but you're kryptonite. And this is, this is exactly the same feeling here too. It's like the beast, right? In Beauty and the Beast, where he was this scary fucking thing and everybody bowed down to him, but she didn't. She didn't. She said, oh, hell no. I'm not going to come to dinner with you because you're an ass. And you can tell him I said no. And they were like, oh, fucking A. Lumiere was like, oh, God. You know, Cogsworth was like, oh, my God, shit, fuck, shit. And they got to go and be the messenger. And they'll be like, oh, fuck, he's not going to like that. Because this is the kind of masculine who's used to doing what he wants to do. He gets his way. He's a boss. He does whatever the fuck he wants. And so when you say no to them or you, you're you this, this flower that's paying them no mind. And what do you mean they're not kissing my ass or chasing me? What do you mean they're not fawning over me like all the other bitches? That is a reality check. But it's the biggest thing of all is an ego check. It's a goddamn chin check to the ego. And this feminine has served one up, man. She uppercutted his ass. Boom. Like she was Mike Tyson. Because you don't fear them. I mean, look at her. She goes right up to him and, and pets the fucking beast. You, you don't fear them. And they find that sexy as fuck. That you're not just bending to their will. They find that to be fascinating. Like, oh my God. You're really just not throwing yourself at me? You're really not chasing me? Holy shit, why? Right? It's like interesting to them. Like, what? Oh, the chariot, Cancerian energy, and the hanged man. There's some sort of a change in perspective coming or an epiphany. An aha moment, an epiphany is on its way. Now, that is the card of Cancer. This is also travel, movement, arrival. What's arriving is a change in perspective. What's that mean? Well, it does mean that someone's going to look at something differently or they look at you very differently. They see you differently. They see you the way that they always should have saw you. This reminds me of literally Beauty and the Beast because I hear the song in my head. Just a little change. Small to say the least. Both a little scared. Neither one prepared. Beauty and the beast. See how he's unwilling? Just a little change. You have the page of swords. Two of pentacles. How they've gone back and forth about this. Three of wands. Queen of pentacles. And the seven of wands. This is them. Remember, we talked about that gate earlier, how the gate was there, but it was transparent. You can see right through it. I mean, does it not look like this? 
trying to defend himself, hide himself, you know, be guarded, but you can see right through him. Honey, you can see right through him. Honey, let me say again, you can see right through him. Okay, you can see right through him. This Queen of Pentacles is holding some sort of an offer. So an offer is coming. But is the offer going to come from them or from someone else? That's the, that's the thing. <laughs> you wait too long, you miss out, you snooze, you lose. But with the Six of Wands being the first card, I don't feel like they're, they're, the, they're the loser here. I don't feel like they are. I feel like they're going to be the winner. They're the victor in this storyline. Because it's just a little change. Something shifts and it's very minor. It's very small. And it can be what shifts is the way they're looking at this connection or with you or whatever. But it's something very small. Something very tiny happens here. And it just creates this really big, huge shift. Like it's, it's life changing. They look at you differently and they may look at you and say, wow, she really fuck with me, huh? Wow, you really fuck with me, huh? You really see me for who I am and you're cool with that. Like you, you, you don't care about all the other things. You just, you, you fuck with me for me. And it's like, yeah, I do. But those other bitches don't. Those other bitches are chasing for clout because you're handsome or you're rich or you're successful. I mean, you can go be with bitches like that, but that's not me. I know what I want, and I know what I deserve. And I don't just want Gaston. I can get Gaston at any second. I could have been married to Gaston last week. But you see me with Gaston? No. Because I don't want that. I want true love or nothing at all. This doesn't start off fairy tale. This does not start off fairy tale, but it ends like that. And they lived happily ever after is the vibe that I get. <laughs> That's the vibe I get here. It definitely didn't start off fairy tale though. What the fuck was that? Whimsical and elusive. It reminds me of the beast. Remember in Beauty and the Beast, how he kind of was really like timid, but he would be kind of like this. You see what I'm saying? But, but he's hiding it. It's actually a really adorable energy. It becomes kind of timid and passive, but not in a bad way. But in a way of like, you catch them off guard and they feel intimidated and they're nervous. And they don't want to fuck it up and they want to impress you. Because they can see you're not very easily impressed. Right? First card being whimsical. There is a whimsical-like energy between the two of you. It feels like magic. And I did say fairy tale earlier. But it doesn't start off like that. Nothing is going to be perfect. Absolutely no relationship is going to be perfect. But when two high vibe people come together, this is the key here, is that it won't be perfect. But what will happen is you guys are going to be at this higher vibration and be tempered. And so you guys will be self-aware as to not let things get carried away. So it's not going to be boring. It's not going to be perfect. There still will be ups, downs, and storms and such because we're muggles and struggling here, trying to, you know, maintain our high vibration with our spiritual energy here. It's a struggle. So it's not that it's going to be perfect and boring, but you won't let shit get out of hand and get carried away is really the big point here. Sorry, somebody texted me. It's like finding a unicorn. It's a mythical creature. I mean, isn't that like what the whole household of the beast is shit was about they were like this is fucking impossible who the fuck would love his ass he's a beast yeah we'll have a better chance finding a unicorn we'll have a better chance seeing a pig fly but then it actually happens i don't know i just get that feeling but bottom of the deck in your last card is charming there there someone's charmed the other one it's in it's bewitched it's enchanted 
I was enchanted to meet you. Now let's get into your extended. Should you wish to rent it, click below this video the word more. It's going to bring up all my links. You're going to click on the first one. It'll take you to my website. Go to the extended reading section and look for the special love slash. No, no, no. For you guys, it's the November extended readings. Excuse me. November extended readings. And also my erotic readings are there. They're timeless. So you're going to see an erotica tarot section in my extended readings. You guys are more than welcome to go and check those out. Everybody's been loving that and they, they couldn't believe it's been there all along. They were like, oh my God, we didn't even know you had those types of readings there. I do. Also in the link below, excuse me, also in the description box below is my link to my second vlog lifestyle channel called Missy in Wonderland. Check me out there. Um, also tickets are on sale for my 1111 witches brew. If you're interested in coming, you PayPal me the ticket price, which is $88 and 88 cents. Email me and I will email you the link. I've already sold quite a few tickets for that zoom event and I'm so excited about it. All right. I'll see you guys in the extended Capricorns and Capricorn cross watchers. Love you. Bye.